So you make a very good point. Obviously, everybody knows drugs like um, Viagra. Uh, these are what's called phosphodesterase inhibitors or PD-5 in inhibitors. And historically, those were primarily put forth in clinical trials for pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary fibrosis, and really trying to open up ischemic blood vessels. Mm -hmm. Wait, that's the how they corner. started? Yes. That's how it I started. didn't know that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. That everybody had a heart on. They're like, there's more money you, in this. You've been shocking us live on camera all day long. You're kind of putting us to shame. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the side effects from the men that were taking it was they didn't want to get... So at the end of a clinical trial, you got to return <laughs> the unused like medication. And these guys would not return the unused medication because uh, they got such good improvement right. in erectile. <laughs> so obviously then Pfizer rec recognizing the importance of this market and erectile dysfunction Interesting. changed the indication in the clinical trial. So, so now we know these drugs are obviously very successful, but there's a, mis there's a misconception by many physicians that Viagra is a nitric oxide donor. It's not. It's not. These drugs are dependent upon nitric oxide. Right. So when we become stimulated. So if we have a, a kind of an intimate thought or something, there's the, the sex organs are highly innervated with what's called non-adrenergic, non-cholinergic nerve endings. And then those nerve endings produce nitric oxide gas. Oh. And then it dilates the blood vessels of the corpus cavernosum. You get an inflow and engorgement of blood. It prevents the outflow. That's an erection. Mm -hmm. right. And it's in both men and women, right? You need engorgement in the penis of the clitoris to get an erection. Mm -hmm. All of that increase in engorgement is dependent upon the ability to make nitric oxide. So how does how do these PD-5 inhibitors work? So now when you generate nitric oxide, it activates a second messenger called cyclic GMP. Mm -hmm. And then these drugs work on preventing the breakdown of cyclic GMP. So this is a second messenger. So nitric oxide turns the switch on, these drugs keep it on. Yeah, keep and that's why it's oh, warned, you're warned against four hour erections, right. yeah. an unsafe drop in blood pressure, and all the side effects, because now you've lost regulation. And the important thing about this and the role of nitric oxide is these drugs have been on the market, I think, for now 25 years. Mm -hmm. There's clear clinical evidence that 50% of the men that are prescribed these drugs don't respond with better erections yeah. or, or better symptoms yeah. of, 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 of BPH. Mm -hmm. So why is that? It's because their endothelial cells don't make any nitric oxide to activate the signaling cascade so there's no substrate for PD-5 inhibitors to work on. So what does that tell us? It tells us that erectile dysfunction in both men and women is a symptom of insufficient nitric oxide production. Mm, and this is wow. a humongous wow, point. Wow, this wow. is a humongous point because number one, so for all of you watching, we treat a lot of guys with this and, and we deal with the psychology of this as well, oh, yeah. right? The psychology is very uh, powerful. Now, I think I read in your book that the statistic was that 50% of men over 40 show some signs of erectile dysfunction, which, by the way, it's, it's a it's a marker for uh, more important diseases and, and and troubles, not just performance and and quality of life. But if you you know you guys are watching, uh, if I understood this right, nitric uh, these PD5 inhibitors they work only when you have proper nitric oxide right. production. Right. Because we get a lot of guys that depend on these or they think that they depend on these medications, and sometimes they don't work and they get super frustrated. Right, yeah. and it becomes the psychology gets even worse, right? Yeah. To well, repeat, to make sure I understood that, because yeah. I actually can testify that I've actually cut down on my daily Cialis dose. Yeah. Because my main symptom when I started TRT, testosterone therapy, was ED, right? Yeah. So I started taking this nitric oxide based supplement that actually works. Yeah. And I've actually gone from taking it daily to three times a week and having just as good as your I'm actually off therapy right now because I'm trying to pregnant my wife and I'm having great erections, yeah. showing that it absolutely works. So yeah. again, to make sure- And it's sure, a supplement, not a prescription medication. Yeah, and make sure that the, the viewers can really understand that. When you say nitric oxide turns on the switch of vasodilation, right. or vascular uh, endothelial dilation, right? And then the Viagra or Cialis can enhance that switch in order to work, but eventually four hours later or 72 hours later, it goes back to baseline. And that baseline is required nitric and oxide. based on your nitric oxide intake. That's right. Right. So these drugs potentiate the effects of nitric mm -hmm. oxide. Wow. They are not nitric oxide donors. They don't stimulate or activate nitric right. oxide. These drugs release. efficacy is dependent upon nitric oxide production. So if we get to the root cause of treating erectile dysfunction or really any major chronic disease, you have to restore the production of nitric oxide, which leads to normal vasomotor tone, prevents vascular inflammation, and basically makes everything better. So it's foundational. You cannot fix any chronic disease without first supporting the blood supply and oxygen nutrients to that individual organ tissue or cell 
and nitric oxide is the master regulator of that. That's and, and I think that's the most important that's point, amazing. is that this is at the base of almost every biological function that we need. Again, you know, like we, we treat a lot with hormones, with PD-5 inhibitors, um, with, with different supplements. But if you don't have the vasodilation and the blood flow, and if you've lost that, almost nothing's going to work. So, yeah. so who needs this? It's almost everybody in our everybody. society. Everybody. You know, I'm always kind of worried to say w there's a panacea that yeah, works no, with everything. Right. That's not what we're trying to say. What right. we're trying to say is we need to first understand physiology. Mm -hmm. no, that's right. Basic physiology, once you understand that, you understand why nitric oxide is important. And that's going to take us to our next point. How do you do it? How do you really increase your, your endogenous nitric oxide and you don't get lost in the noise of all the products? You know, I want you to talk about this. Sometimes we talk to our patients about this. They're like, oh, don't worry about it. I take allergenic. Yeah. I take <laughs> L-citrulline. I take right. L-citrulline. Right. You know, so uh, the, a lot of times it stops us. Now we know better. We try to educate, but try yeah. to educate our consumers about what to do with this. Well, first stop watching TV. <laughs> 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 or stop so listening to ads on Instagram. Stop <laughs> listening to ads. Oh my God. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of creative companies out there, uh, creative marketing companies that yeah. don't know, understand the science or the biochemistry of nitric oxide. So this first pathway to be discovered, and one of the kind of the, the steps in that pathway was this enzyme converts arginine to nitric oxide, mm -hmm. and then you get citrulline as a byproduct. So now the market's flooded with arginine citrulline based okay. products. But the problem with this pathway is that you're never deficient in these amino acids, right? These, is, these are semi-essential amino acids, meaning that these amino acids are produced endogenously through the urea cycle. Mm -hmm. So our body normally makes these. Right. And then also the proteins we eat, whether it's plant protein or, or animal protein, part of proteins are made up of amino acids. Mm -hmm. And these proteins are broken down to amino acids in the acid environment of our stomach. So we're getting a constant supply of arginine or citrulline through the urea cycle and through our diet. Mm -hmm. So the problem in patients that are nitric oxide deficient is they're not out of arginine. They've lost the ability to convert arginine to nitric oxide. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, I, I say all the time that giving a nitric oxide deficient patient arginine or citrulline is like putting gas in a car with a blown up engine. Right? <laughs> you're not going to get anywhere, right? Because right. you're not out of fuel. Yeah. The yeah. engine is broken to yeah. get you where you want to go. And that's right. the, and the other, you know, there's some dangers in that too. And there's a number of, or at least two clinical studies showing if you give high dose arginine to post infarct patients, Completely. there's a higher mortality. Wow. If you give arginine to patients with peripheral artery disease known to have endothelial dysfunction, they get worse. Mm -hmm. uh, intermittent claudication increases and the patients do very poorly. So what we focused on is completely different. And as a biochemist and, and kind of a physiologist, we understand now how to recouple that enzyme, how to improve the function of that. So now the body is able to convert its own arginine into nitric oxide and basically prime that pathway. And if you're giving high dose arginine, you increase the expression of arginase and you're basically diverting the arginine away from nitric oxide production. Mm. So I tell people, don't, don't waste your money on these types of products because you're not out of fuel. You've lost the ability to convert right. that into your nitric oxide. Broken. Your wow. engine's broken. Fix the engine. Beautifully so. so Talking about diseases, yeah. how does nitric oxide play a role in disease, infections, and our immunological response? Well, scientifically speaking, obviously not related to any products uh, we're developing, but if you look at what nitric oxide does, so there's four hallmarks of every single chronic disease, mm -hmm. whether it's diabetes, Alzheimer's, heart disease, liver disease, pulmonary disease, whatever. There's always low blood flow to and that organ. There's inflammation, mm -hmm. oxidative stress, and immune dysfunction. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nitric oxide is what controls and regulates all four oh, of those. Four. Wow. So if you, if you produce nitric oxide, you eliminate the low blood flow. It suppresses inflammation. Mm -hmm. It inhibits oxidative stress. And mm -hmm. it prevents the immune dysfunction in that individual order. Mm -hmm. So if you fix nitric oxide, everything else follows. And the human body is so resilient. And I'm constantly amazed at the science and, and, and really the clinical practice of medicine at how if you give the body what it needs, the body heals itself, yeah. right? Yeah. Drugs and physicians don't heal patients. The patients heal themselves, yeah. provided they're given the right guidance. Yeah, right. the right medications. And, and, and the right medications, yeah. yeah. Right. Amazing. So and, ju and just the, uh, the statistic, because I got this from your book, I mean, eight out of 10 leading causes of death are undisputably connected to NO production deficiency. 
Well, it goes to the, 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 the root cause and the mechanism of all chronic disease. I mean, obviously, it's not going to affect accidents or, right. or drug overdose, which I right, think right. are the two, top, <laughs> two that <laughs> nitric oxide doesn't hit. But everything we know about yeah. the onset and progression of chronic disease revolves around the production of nitric oxide. Wow. It's anti-inflammatory, uh, vasodilatory process, regulates oxygen. Yeah. So I hope we drove in, we're driving wow. the point of how important nitric yeah. oxide well, is. Well, I think we're missing yeah. a very important question. <laughs> I think a lot of people are interested in this one, using nitric oxide for athletic performance, yes. yeah. for working out, and overall workout. Yeah. Fitness. fitness. Optimizing your health is only a scan away. Select the QR code that fits your profile best, and we look forward to hearing from you at the Medical Health Institute.